Hi everybody, my name is Lane Jessup. I am a segment marketing manager here at Lenovo in charge of the ThinkPad P-Series line of mobile workstations. And with me today is Mr. Kevin Beck. Hi, my name is Kevin Beck and I'm a senior story technologist in our PCSD group. And my job is literally to tell stories about our technology. So today we're going to talk about the brand new ThinkPad P1 Generation 4. Um, and we're going to dive deep on some of the new innovations and technologies that we've got going on here. One of the things that uh, we got a lot of feedback on was the paint. Um, and it's the first thing that people uh, experience when they hold a machine. So tell us what we've done Indeed. with the paint. Indeed. Um, fingerprints and the way that people's technology looks and feels in their hands is very important to them. So our team of engineers in Yokohama, Japan that design our ThinkPads spent literally two years and they've come up with a new anti-fingerprint paint that's found uh, on a lot of our new ThinkPads, including the, the P1 Gen 4. And what it does is two things. One, not only help almost completely eliminate getting deposited into the fingerprint landing on the, the, the system in the first place. There, yeah, yeah uh, for it sticking is the word I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, it also, if it does stick, if there is some fingerprint, the removability, the ability to wipe it off is much better than it ever was before. Cleaning is an all new topic these days, a hot yeah. topic, if you will, out there in the market. It is indeed. All of our CMF, our color materials and finish teams across our Think products, ThinkPad, ThinkCenter, ThinkStation, even ThinkVision monitors have unified the cleaning and testing standards for all of the different coatings and paints that we use. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've come down to four CDC recommended compounds for cleaning systems. Small thing, but in these days, a really, really Big, in the, big in the age of coronavirus, yeah. cleaning has never been more important. <laughs> so something else that we've uh, changed about this chassis mm -hmm. is the display. Indeed. This display looks a little different shape than what we uh, normally had. It, it is indeed. The industry is getting a little bit uh, taller and we've gotten a little bit taller screens. We're moving from 16 by nine aspect ratio to 16 by 10. Mm -hmm. So you absolutely do not lose any width, but you actually gain 11% more working space at the top and bottom of the screen. The aesthetic, as you mentioned earlier, is getting much more attention on machines these days and really has been. So uh, we've, we've really worked on this particular machine to, to really kind of skinny down the bezels mm -hmm. and, and make everything look as, as good as we could. Why, uh, why care about bezels? Well, you can't read a, a review of any phone or any laptop these days without somebody commenting on the size of the bezels. And you're right, it is definitely absolutely part of the modern aesthetic of phones and PCs. The fact of the matter is, however, that that space in the, the chin, mm -hmm. in particular, of most screens was not actually wasted space. It wasn't just there and with nothing behind it. That's typically where the controller board for the screen actually lived. Okay. And so in order to make thinner bezels, top, sides, and especially on the bottom, the team for this year developed a new type of uh, interface board or interface for the controller board for the screen. And they're actually able to take that and tuck it behind the screen. But by tucking that in the back, it lets us take that chin down, lets us actually maximize the space of the screen, give you a much better viewing and user experience. Let's talk about the display itself mm -hmm. a little bit. So not only do we have nice narrow bezels, we have a taller display, mm -hmm. but the technology of the display itself is actually changing and evolving. Indeed. One of the things that is has really become top of mind for a lot of people in using displays is the amount of blue light that they emit. Right? Why is that important? Why blue light? So lots of studies out there that say that, uh, you know, to continued exposure to blue light can have a detrimental effect on your vision, mm -hmm. um, it, certainly temporarily and perhaps even long term, but also it can interfere with your circadian rhythm patterns, you keep you from being able to go to sleep at night and just sort of mess up your whole day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there have been solutions for this for a long time uh, at a software level. So you just program it to say, cut out this little bit of blue light. And that's why if you've ever used this, everything turns yellow at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, whenever you turn that function on. So what we've got this year in the, uh, the P1 Gen 4 is a intrinsically low blue light display. The key thing about this lane is that it doesn't just take out the blue light, mm -hmm. it simply doesn't emit the harmful wavelengths of blue light in the first place. The kind of people who use uh, P1 a lot of video editing, photo editing, high accuracy sort of thing. You mm -hmm. don't want in the middle of uh, the evening, it all of a sudden changing colors on you. So we've uh, essentially fixed that problem at the source. So Kevin, we've talked a lot about the outside of the machine. Mm -hmm. What about uh, just using this thing on a day-to-day -day basis and having this inside of your mm -hmm. bag and out of your bag and on the desk and you know we're all working from home these days and yeah. how do we build these things to withstand day-to-day -day life Indeed. these days? So every ThinkPad goes through 200 plus torture and qualification tests 
drop, beat, banged, heated. Cool. Now those were developed in-house by Lenovo. That's our in-house. But in addition to all the internal Lenovo tests that we do to make sure it's really a ThinkPad, we also test to Department of Defense MIL standard 810H tests. And they're designed to test the fitness of equipment for uh, use in certain conditions by military and other folks. And in this case, the ThinkPad passes 12 methods, mm -hmm. or is tested, I should say. But underneath that, there are a load of sub tests known as procedures, okay. and we have taken the number up on ThinkPad across the line this year to 26. So what kind of stuff do they test for out there? It's like low pressure, high pressure, low temperature, high temperature, temperature fluctuation, freezing, thawing, uh, explosive atmosphere. That's a good one. Vibration, mm -hmm. mechanical shock, and one of the more interesting ones is the, the sand and dust test. So at the end of all these tests, they take the machine and they push the power button and the machine is expected to power up? Yep, and yep. If you're an office worker and you're taking mm -hmm. it out into the field on average, yep. we we test way above and beyond uh, what say, anybody would see. We test way above and beyond anything that you don't buy from a specialty, ultra rugged um, notebook provider that probably costs two to three times as much as the ThinkPad. So a lot of value built into these machines. Indeed. We've made uh, a lot of innovations uh, in this machine, as we mentioned. So the, mm -hmm. the screen is really one of the mm -hmm. big ones. Um, what, you know, it looks like we've cleaned up what we call the C cover, mm -hmm. the keyboard deck here, um, kind of, and I don't see a discrete fingerprint reader down here anymore. Uh, looks like we've put that up in the power button these uh, days. We have indeed. By moving the fingerprint reader into the power button, simply when the system is either turned off or asleep, all you have to do is reach up and just touch your finger on the power button. Mm -hmm. It either wakes up or it turns on. Uh, and of course the team did think about the scenario where somebody might be authenticating something or just logging back in after lunch and the machine is awake. Uh, when the fingerprint reader is active and looking for a fingerprint, it actually disables the power button. So, so we thought about that. We did, of course. <laughs> you know these guys, you know these, these are some of the most think about everything. obsessive people I've ever met. And I love working with them and talking about the stuff they've done in ThinkPad. So biometrics, fingerprints, mm -hmm. uh, becoming very popular out there these days. Yep. Um, this particular fingerprint reader is a very secure version of that. Could you tell us a little bit about the security behind the fingerprint reader? Sure. It's what's known as a match-on-chip fingerprint reader. Mm -hmm. um, and the easiest way to understand this is if you think about the three things that a fingerprint reader needs to do. One, it's got to capture and store the fingerprints from you, right, to establish. Got to read it, yep what the identity is in the first place. And then every time you use it after that, it's got to take that fingerprint, compare it against the originals. Sure. Uh, and then if they match, it tells the operating system, okay, you're good to unlock. And in a match on chip fingerprint reader, all of those actions occur solely and only in the fingerprint reader itself. There's no communication of that data to other parts of the system. So, so it's, it's kind very, of walled very, off from everything. Very off secure. And very, very secure. Um, and then our keyboard. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows and loves our keyboard. The uh, the reviewers out there yeah. for many, many years have always lauded mm -hmm. us for our keyboard. And we've uh, tweaked this one just a mm -hmm. little bit. Uh, so tell us what we we've, we've changed and upgraded on this particular version. Right. So as you say, Lane, the keyboard is one of the hallmarks of ThinkPad. They have a signature typing action. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that uh, actually sort of interrupts the smoothness of that curve is if the key is pressed hard enough to actually hit the bottom, to bottom out on the, the bottom of the keyboard assembly. You get that hard landing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they call it, a hard landing. So what our team did, and I think this is pretty ingenious, the Mylar sheet that they use uh, for the spill resistance in the keyboard um, actually has a little cutout underneath it and there's a corresponding pillar under the bottom of the key. So when you go down all the way to the bottom, even if you press it really, really hard, it doesn't bottom out against metal. It's actually using that Mylar sheet as a little bit of a trampoline for a mm. soft landing action and then pushes back up. Uh, so speaking of user experience and making little tweaks here and mm -hmm. there, uh, I notice on this version of the chassis, we have speaker grills uh, up on indeed. the keyboard deck. Mm -hmm. So. How does that uh, affect the user experience, if you will? The, the care, feeding, time, effort that our audio team has put into the system is, uh, is really amazing. These are Dolby Atmos speaker system certified user facing speakers. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, you know, a reason, it's a reasonable amount of room in this machine to get some resonating chambers. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of these and, and I was very pleasantly surprised. So not only the um, speakers themselves, mm -hmm. but uh, also the microphones on here. One of the key things, as we all know, in the last year, certainly it was important before, it's even more important <laughs> now, is that uh, audio quality, or I should say the audio conferencing experience. Yes, yeah. Right? And so what the team has done in this is connected the logic, essentially, behind the microphones and the speakers to that 
audio conferencing subsystem within the operating system that runs that uh, and introduced a, a an AI trained model to detect howling or feedback. So we've got artificial intelligence running in the machine. Indeed. In uh, one and a half seconds or less, it will detect feedback or howling. It will mute the system and then so that you don't uh, get cut off in the middle of a conversation and not know what's going on, it actually pops up something and says, feedback and howling were detected. The system has been muted. Would you like to keep doing this or move your system, do something about it? So we talked a little bit about the audio and the microphones. The one we haven't talked about yet is the camera. Notebook cameras in general have been 720p or mm -hmm. HD cameras. Uh, for this year's uh, ThinkPad P1 G4, we have moved to an FHD or 1080p camera. So higher resolution, more pixels, all, all the goodness that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also some really cool secret sauce built into this and uh, a lot of our other ThinkPads, is that if you think about what happens in low light, and probably everybody's seen this, you're working in your office and the sun starts going down, you may have forgotten to turn on the light, and if you're on a video conference, things just start getting grainier and grainier mm -hmm. and grainier. As the light goes down. As yeah. the light goes down. And that's because your camera's having to become more and more sensitive. And the noise reduction that we use to get rid of that sparkliness and that graininess, it works really, really well. But because it tends to smooth things out, that smoothing would also be seen in your face. So you kind of look like a mannequin. Mm -hmm. it looks unnatural. <laughs> looks unnatural. So there's actually an algorithm in the camera logic of ThinkPads that detects your face based on the size of it. And as it gets closer and closer, it actually reduces the effect of that smoothing algorithm. So that if you have to lean in to make a point or talk to somebody on camera, you don't look like a mannequin. Super subtle. You would never probably notice it that we have it, but you'd notice if we didn't. Gotcha. So we've talked about all of the innovation and goodness that uh, we're bringing to the, the ThinkPad P1 Gen 4 on the outside. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to dive on the inside and talk about all of the innovation that we've got in going on in there. This is where the, the meat and potatoes of, uh, of our machines really comes in. You know, we've, we've got all these, all the horsepower that we've got going mm -hmm. on in here, right? Yep. We've got 11th gen um, Intel CPUs in here, eight, eight core CPUs. We've got really powerful NVIDIA GPUs going all the way up to the RTX A5. 5,000 in there. Um, wonderful performance that these components bring to the end user, but one of the byproducts of that is heat. Heat really is the antithesis, or the enemy, if the you enemy, will, yes. <laughs> of, uh, of performance and comfort. Obvious just from looking at this, there are two fans, uh, but there are really three very interesting things about this that are uh, new and, and very interesting for this generation of products. One is that the way these two are linked together, of course pipes, that's standard, but mm -hmm. this assembly that yeah. links all of that together, huge. that is a massive uh, hybrid cooling vapor chamber. Cooling only occurs when you, or occurs most efficiently, we should say, at the point in which uh, things change state. So this vapor chamber increases the amount of surface area for that exchange of state which pulls the heat from the center assembly from the CPU and the GPU out through these fans and exhaust it. It's just a very, very efficient and inventive way to get more cooling into less space. What are these uh, kind of blue sticky looking things that are on here? What is that? Okay, so that's thermal insulation again, because the efficiency of a thermal uh, cooling system is only as good as its contact with the thing that generates the heat, in mm -hmm. this case, the CPU and the GPU. So these massive pads here for contact to the CPU and the GPU. So we wanna take all the heat out of them as quickly as possible and have it exchanged out of the system by the fans and cool everything down. Uh, and I did mention there were three things. Uh, I'll just briefly touch on the other two. One, uh, for the higher end systems that have this full cooling system, we actually have airflow pulled in through the keyboard. Yes, and yeah. To which you may say, so what? Yeah. But because of the spill resistant nature of the keyboards, the team had to come up with a very inventive way to route any potential spills through the keyboard and around the, heat, the cooling system to make sure that if anything was spilled, it didn't actually interfere with the cooling system. And so we have vents on the bottom here. Yep. In this case, more is better. You can never have too much airflow. Can't have in, too in much airflow. Book. And speaking of airflow, uh, one of the, the, the third and final thing that I'd like to talk briefly about is, is what we call the dual bypass design. So this is specifically designed to have a constant airflow over the top 
and over the bottom, oh, okay. hence the term dual bypass, so that we're actually cooling the air above and below the system so that it uh, lessens the amount of heat transfer into the keyboard and the bottom of the system. One thing that uh, historically um, has, has, has troubled uh, laptops, mm -hmm. not just us, but really any mm -hmm. laptop, are these cooling fins. That's where the heat exchange actually takes mm -hmm. place. And we've seen some issues with those uh, in the past, getting clogged up. Our team did a fabulous piece of work many years ago uh, where they took uh, fans from all these different environments and they sent the stuff in the fans, all the different subtypes of dust and dirt off to a medical testing laboratory and figured out that if we were to build the fans in such a way that the static electricity buildup was constantly grounded off through the ground of the system, mm -hmm. uh, we could practically eliminate almost all dust buildup. So all of the things that we've done inside the machine, you know, we really have to thank our partners out there at, at Intel and NVIDIA uh, for, for partnering with us through and engineering with us the tens of thousands of hours of spending close collaboration with those those teams over there. So uh, thank you very much to them. Um, again, this the, they really helped to make a, a chassis like this possible. Indeed. Uh, this has been fabulous. Thank you all very much and thank you, Lane. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time.